thanks to the supporters of channel member Jack Brassington. Well, in the end, it only took us five years to get Manchester City back to the Premier League from non-league. And then just the one year to secure that Premier League spot and look like we were never going to get relegated again. Five more years. And has the AI managed to balls up all our hard work? Hello and welcome to Saving Man City. Five years later, I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we are going to do exactly what you would expect us to do on an episode called that. We're going to have a look to see what happened five years later in the Saving Man City save. As you can see, I've holidayed forward five years. It's now 2033. I haven't looked at anything. I've not even cleared my inbox. There you go. The inbox has now been cleared. Um, and I guess the best place to start is the Premier League table and have a look to just check that Manchester City is still there, of course, with the Premier Division in this save. And I mean, OK, fair enough. 15th, lower mid table. I mean, the goal was to reestablish Manchester City as a Premier League club. Five years later, they're still in the Premier League. That seems pretty established if you ask me although not quite as good as they were when i left because when i left we, what we finished ninth i think in my previous season at the club uh, let's have a look to see who they rustler is the manager that is um that is excellent did he take over straight from me another manchester city legend obviously i'm i'm a manchester city legend or should be as you can see, not even on the favoured personnel list, but Liam Delap is, Charlie Patino is, James McAtee is a club icon, and nobody else from our world has made it anywhere relevant on any of these lists, which is not ideal. Manager history. So it was actually Vincent Company took over from me. Okay, so I retired. Vincent Company took over. That was the one I speculated it would be. I expected it to be Vincent Company. He lasted until the day before Christmas Eve, before he was sacked. And Uwe Rösler took over just after Christmas and has been the manager ever since. So it looks like that first season after I left was a tricky one. And in actual fact, it looks like they got relegated the year I left. Because Rösler finished 19th in the Premier League, in the Premier League and then third in the championship and came back up through the playoffs let me just double check that yeah um yeah okay so that was the season where we finished ninth our one and only season in the premier league the next year 19th place dropped back down again came back up again and then a 16th a 14th and then now 15th so i don't know i mean i would still say that counts as being an established premier league club I'm really surprised with the team that we put together that two Manchester City legends together somehow managed to contrive to get relegated. Let's just jump back and have a look at that season. How do we do that? If we go to stages and then go back to the season, they were relegated. Um, have I gone too far? I've gone far too far. Um, relegation season. There we go. So the relegation season... I mean, it looks like it was never really disastrous. Started reasonably well, hovering around the relegation zone. Um, where's the point that company was sacked? So company was sacked here with the team in 14th place. And then going into the last day of the season, they were 15th, hadn't been in the relegation zone. I mean, they'd spent one match day in the relegation zone back in october so halloween was spent in the relegation zone the entirety of the rest of the season not in the relegation zone. is this the right season no it, it can't be i don't think that tracks i think that's the season they've just had yeah upon further inspection this is actually the season that's just been been done i guess you can't look at past league positions when you're looking at previous seasons so um yeah actually to confirm they were relegated quite comfortably i mean there's a nine point gap there uh behind brentford if we have a look i guess the easiest way is to have a look at the fixtures that season so it was that year wasn't it um oh blimey okay <laughs> oh dear what a start um a couple of wins in august for company um and then he only ever won once more that is a rotten run of matches 
and then a win there against West Ham, and then another rotten run of matches. And Rossler never really managed to turn it around. That is a quite hideous season where it's only really Delap who's ever scored. What happened to Caballero? Um, he's only scored four times for Argentina in 35 appearances. I don't think he was quite the superstar wonder kid we thought he was going to be. So 16 goals for us that, se that first season looked brilliant. Only five goals the following year. Started 36 times, but only scored five goals. I can only assume he was being played out of position. Um, even in the championship, only getting 12 goals, 10 goals that season, and eventually does get sold for a massive £67 million to Eintracht Frankfurt, where he has started knocking the goals in a little bit more frequently now. But that isn't really what I expected from Marcus Caballero. Um, Liam Delap is still at the club. There's Liam Delap. Um, presumably is now the club's all-time record goal scorer. Um, he has got 194 goals now. Does that make him the, the record holder? I think it probably does, yeah. Most league goals for the club, Liam Delap, Liam Delap, 194 goals. He's got a long way to go to break the most league appearances, 564 by Alan Oakes. Um, I don't think he's going to get anywhere near there before his career ends. Why can't I find... What's going on here? Liam Delap. I was trying to go back to him. So he, uh, yeah, he's not going to play enough games, you would think, but is the all-time record goal scorer. Never really had another season like that first one in the Premier League, though. 25 goals for me. And it's one of those things you do see from time to time where players just perform better for the human manager. Between Delap and Caballero, we had a 50-goal-a-season partnership that year. And they never got anywhere near it. And even in the championship, the lap only getting 14 goals. And we saw what he did to the championship the previous time around with 26. That's that's not the Liam Delap we know and love. Eight goals, 12 goals, then 11 goals. The fact he's captain and still the main man at Manchester City, I think probably tells you a lot about how City haven't really moved on. In fact, still playing at Gig Lane really confirms the club haven't really moved on at all in the five years since I left. Charlie Patino is still there i mean he's been a uh a very long servant pretty much ever present since signing which i guess makes him a good signing uh but this whole still playing at gig lane thing is bonkers they they, they don't own it. oh here we go so they are due to move to the fifty nine thousand nine hundred and twelve capacity joe mercer stadium on the 23rd of june 2033 so actually in less than a month they're moving to a sixty thousand capacity stadium which should you would think see them start to push on and maybe start to get back to former glories you would think oh hold on there was a tip so right <laughs> okay immediately upon me leaving there was a temporary relocation to the city of manchester stadium the the ground formerly known as the etihad presumably while gig lane was being expanded but that so they went back to the etihad got relegated there whilst expanding berry's ground and then went back to gig lane which is now bigger and has under soil heating to come back up again but then never went back to the city of Manchester Stadium and instead are building an entirely new ground that they move into this summer. This club loves off the pitch turmoil and nonsense, doesn't it? I'm just going to, we're going to have a look at the finances in a second. I just want to have a look at what transfers have gone on since I moved on as well. So this was my last season. I didn't sell anyone after I left. And then this was that first summer. So I had three of these were pre-arranged by me. Um, Ken Zegulov, Akamia, and Bondo. Um, he ended up going back to Borussia Dortmund eventually. So signed for Man City. Um, then went back to Germany the next year and has now made his way back to Borussia Dortmund. Um, that's a weird one. Why sell him? Travis Akamea is a regular player for Manchester City. That's nice to see. Not played for England is a regular player for City and Warren Bondo um, has gone to Sheffield United and now he's on loan playing in France. Fair enough. I guess Ricky J. Jones went to West Brom. 
for 15 million. That summer, how did his career turn out? He's now at Huddersfield, and again, he's another one who played out of his skin for me. That first season in the Premier League, he did he did really really well. It was his best goal return of his entire career. That first season in the Premier League, eight goals from 17 appearances, never got near it again, even in the Championship. Two goals from 40 playing for Huddersfield in the Championship this year. Bonkers. Um, Cello Gumedi, presumably his first choice goalkeeper now. He's not because he went on loan to Barcelona. Right, hold on. So we brought him in. He ended up getting loaned out to Forest. Played a season for Forest in the Championship. Was then... City first choice keeper in the championship and for the first season back in the Premier League ever present but the following year he only played four times so they've brought in another goalkeeper over the top of him and then the year after he spent the season out on loan at Barcelona where he's the backup goalkeeper where he currently is now just sitting on the bench for Barcelona I'm going to need someone to explain that one A up Iden left that summer as well to go to Rangers um, and then big money 75 million pounds spent on nothing particularly exciting. Stolazic got sold there to Brentford, which is fair enough. Um, Gamedi was first choice keeper by then. There's Kenzegulov leaving. Uh, Deli Bashiri, 12 million for him is a decent deal. And there was Bondo leaving, having never really got in the team. Um, didn't really spend much that summer or really bring much in, actually. Farias left to go to Racing Club. Um, another of the youngsters, still got youngsters leaving. Asaya Dada Maskell um, went to Preston. Um, George Murray Jones, I think, is another one of the youngsters um, who eventually moved on. And then £108 million spent that summer on, again, nothing really stands out as outstanding. But they did sell £105 million off a of player as well. So who's been sold for big money? Uh, oh, that's Caballero going to Frankfurt for £67 million, rising to £74. Um, also, this guy, Pino. Um, who'd been brought in the year before, also got sold to Frankfurt. Frankfurt have got some money. Why are Frankfurt able to throw the money around the way they are? Are they presumably just rich in real life, or the Bundesliga is suddenly very, very rich? And then the most recent season, back to fairly conservative spending and not very much in the way of players leaving. Luke Mbete finally leaving the club to go to Norwich after playing over 300 games for Manchester City. Uh, Gamedi, that's when he went to Barcelona. So who is the goalkeeper? We'll come back to that in a second. I just want to see if there's any other. So Suleimana left to Blackburn that summer. Who's the goalkeeper now? Iñaki Peña is the goalkeeper for £40 million. So you've got a goalkeeper like Gamedi, who's good enough to go and sit on Barcelona's bench. But rather than having him in your team, you spend £40 million on a guy in his 30s. Never change Manchester City. Goodness me. This is the team and how they line up now. A lovely flat back six. This is utterly hideous. Uh, Finn back still playing. Finn back getting a lot of hassle in the comments section this week about him being a League One player. I mean, he's played a lot of games in the Premier League for a League One player. I still think he's a very good wing back. Don't judge him as a defender, you weirdos. He's a, he's a winger who just plays a little deeper. That's how we do things around here. Um, Samuel Ibrahim has made his way back. After we had him on loan se uh, several times, he actually joined on a free transfer when he was released by Arsenal and has played very regularly. So good to see Samuel Ibrahim knocking about the place. But that system is horrible. Yeah, I mean, this is this is all pretty horrible. Right, I'm going to add myself as a manager and we're going to uh, we're going to see what the finances are like. So if we go to England, Premier Division, Manchester City, um, yeah, just get me in. Let me look at the finances. Has the debt been paid off? Has the situation got bad again? This is what the people want to know. Media prediction of 17th. Hideous. Absolutely hideous five years after I've moved on. So finances, £27 million in the black, which is nice to see. And it looks like things have been generally positive most of the last five years a little bit of a blip there but it's been balanced in the very recent past presumably by uh by end of season premier league money coming in no danger of failing ffp um net debt is 250 million which to be fair it was only about 330 when i left so i cleared 
one and a half billion pounds worth of debt in six years, the next two managers combined have cleared 60 million in the next five years. I feel like some of us have worked a little harder than others there. Um, the sponsorships are still roughly at the same kind of level and the projection is for a decline, but that doesn't take into account the fact that all of a sudden they're going to be able to fit 60,000 people rather than 18,000 people a week into the stadium. And I think that's probably going to have a pretty significant difference. So all in all, what we've learned there, five years in the future, once again, we've learned the AI isn't as good as football man football manager as I am. We learn it most times when we do these, but at least they haven't just crumbled and fallen back down the leagues. Um, I've left them. I left with the team trying to avoid relegation from the Premier League five years later. That's still where they are. And I think if we went another five or 10 years on, that big stadium probably starts to fix the re last remaining financial problems. And they probably do start to climb back up the league. Do they ever become a big club again? Probably not. But like we said at the start of this series and have said throughout, that was never the goal because that was never where Manchester City was supposed to be. If you take all the money away, they were a lower mid-table Premier League team. Been there for six years now. Job done. Realism. Realism achieved. The natural order of things re-established. Manchester City saved. And now I can have a long-deserved, well-earned summer holiday. There's surely nothing that could possibly lead me to having to release a video at four o'clock on Monday. An episode one. No episode ones. No new series could possibly be... Uh... Hello? Time no speak.